<laughs> shalom, shalom. Greetings. <laughs> All right. I dread it being weird this morning. It took me a minute to get everything set up for this live stream. It's been kind of crazy. All right. Hi, guys. For those of you who are just new to my channel, um, I never introduce myself, so I need to do that today. Um, my name is Amalia Seiler, uh, formerly Amy, but then the most I changed my name. I think it was like June or July of 2018. He said, I'm giving you a new name. And with this name, I call you forth my scribe. And that's what he did. So now I use uh, the name that he has given me uh, to glorify him and to just thank him because he has made me new yet again in this journey and in this walk with the Most High as, um, yeah, as we do. That's what life is. It's a journey with Abba. So um, the Ministry that Abba has instructed me to lead is the Salt and Light Gypsy Ministry. It is a women's ministry um, that brings hope and inspiration and, and artistic creativity uh, through the power of Abba's word and his promises for us every single day. Uh, recently, um, I have added a new title to the ministry. It didn't change the ministry, but it's just that when we glean from the word or from other brothers and sisters who are mature in the knowledge of, you know, in the knowledge of what Yahuwah reveals to each one of us, um, I grab hold of that. I grab hold of that because it really, that's who we are. So if you see in the other title, Ecclesia of Nazarene, that is who you and I are. We are the Nazarene of the last days the uh, lovers of Yahusha um, and servants of the Most High. And the Ecclesia is just the church. Or I don't want to say that because church, well, that's what it is, basically. Many of us find ourselves these days not in a traditional church, though. We find ourselves on YouTube um, or we have created um, a house church or a home group that we fellowship with. Um, and I don't think that's an accident. I think Abba, ac um, sorry, I didn't say that. I think Abba intentionally planned that this time we are living in currently. Um, so, and I, th I think that's because we all have this desire to go and love him and worship him and walk in the ways as the disciples did. You know, when they were first baptized in the Ruach HaKodesh. And he's put that on my heart uh, with my husband, that we are the Acts 2 ministry um, and a Joel 3 ministry. And that's what we base it on, is, is that we have been baptized with the Ruach HaKodesh and that we operate um, through the power Yahusha has given us to heal the sick and to cast out demons, and to intercede and believe and really walk in total surrendered faith that we are his vessel um, and that uh, the Ruach HaKodesh dwells within us and, and uses us for those um, miracles and signs and wonders and all that. So, um, and to, to, you know, to usher in this last harvest of souls. And that is the, um, the word that, Abba gave me last year in April 2018 was that to usher in the last harvest, he would use me um, in such a way. So all that being said, I am so grateful that you are watching this video. It's a gorgeous day. It's beautiful. The sun is out and I feel like we rarely get to enjoy the sunshine anymore. <laughs> it's been like two months of just gray skies, cold weather you know, and just pushing through to spring, right? And here we are, it's a new day. And so the title of this um, video is the, and the, the Zadok or Zodok, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I'm still learning. 
um, calendar. And I feel like the past few weeks, every time I make a video, it's in reference to Parable of the Vineyard's Friday night <laughs> live stream. And it's okay. Hey, I'm learning. And I want to share what I'm learning with you in case you have not heard, do not know, or are interested in finding out. Because we are all always searching. It is our job to search out the things of the most high, right? And that's what he's called us to do. So, um, oh, I need my journal. Hold on one second. I forgot the one I needed. I got everything else ready except for that one. So we're going to pray. And then we're going to jump right in. I do not intend to be long. Um, doing this. I just want to set up a few bullet points and some, you know, some give you some meat and substance that you can search out on your own and pray about for revelation. Because that's all I do is I'm just sharing what I'm learning with you. Okay. All right. So let's see. I did want to reference what I just said a second ago that we are to search out. Um the things of the most high. Just give me one second. All right, so let's pray. Um, and then I'll come back to that later. Uh, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful to you this day, Father. And this, I'm so grateful that it's such beautiful weather. Um, and that, you know, ugh, that your mercy is new every day. I pray, Abba, that you would bless this live stream. And that I would decrease so that you can increase. That the Ruach HaKodesh would speak through me. Um, so that your word, your way, your truth, and your will would come through this message. So let me be small so that you can be big. As I submit my voice over to the teaching, the leading of the Ruach HaKodesh this day, and I pray that all of you are blessed and increased in knowledge and wisdom and understanding from the Ruach as we receive this word. In Yahushua's holy name, amen. All right. Okie do. Okie dokie do's. So I posted on my Instagram this morning, Jubilees 23, 24, and 25. And uh, it was just so beautiful that I just had to repost it about letting us sing, write, and rejoice with one another in psalms, hymns, and words of encouragement. I'm not reading Jubilees 23, 24, and 25, you can go read that. But that was the, that was what was put on my heart this morning, you know, um, that, that I feel like as in the days of the disciples, let us once again share with one another in writing and in love and in prayer and in um, worship and fellowship with one another. Let us share and encourage um, the truth, the wisdom, the love, the compassion, the hope, the faith, and the shalom of the Most High together through the teachings of Yahushua and Right? So today is March 17th, uh, 2019. It is in the world. It is a um, St. Patrick's Day. And it's my birthday. And that is why I titled this Head of the Year. Um, and the, the Zadok, that's the way I'm going to say it. It could be wrong, but that's the way I'm going to say it. Um, the Head of the Year. Because I've never thought of my birthday as the Head of the Year. And I just felt like that that knowledge came to me this morning as I was writing. So I start my journals off every day. I write, and I know you can't see this very well, but I started off with the date and not the date of the Gregorian calendar. But I started off with the date of the, and the Jewish calendar. 
And so I was writing eight R two ten five seven seven nine because five seven seven nine is the year we are in. And um, I'm not going to get into that teaching, but recommend the book A Time to Advance by Chuck Pierce. Changed my life. Changed my life last year. And ever since I've read that book, um, I reference it every single month at the head of the new month um, with the new moon. And so. I followed the Jewish calendar. Oh, thank you. Um, I followed the Jewish calendar for the past, I would say, year, maybe. Uh, and at one point in my walk last year, I was like, well, what if this is not right? So I began to study the lunar calendar and or the creator's calendar. I don't know. I think there's two different ones, but... When the creator's calendar I looked at, and I felt kind of convicted to follow it, but then I think that's the one where Shabbat is like a different day of the week, every week, or you have some that are on the same day and some that are not, and it's just really super confusing. And I definitely, like, we tried to do that for, I think we did it for almost a month. But it was so hard. It did not feel natural. It felt like it felt like it was a forced um, calendar. I don't I don't have another word to explain it. It's just when you have to, I don't know. It just didn't line up. So basically, I was just like, I looked at my husband and I was like, No, we're not doing this anymore. I can't take it. Even if it is wrong, I'm going to Shabbat on Saturdays because this does. It's too hard. It didn't make sense. So. Um, so from that, we went back to the Jewish calendar. Now, in the past two months, I've heard um, there's a women's group I'm in on Facebook um, through Teshuva Ministries. And I love Rebecca. She's amazing. But she was, um, she mentioned something to me about, I don't even know which calendar, but I think it was the lunar calendar or something I'm not really sure but she was like follow that calendar have you ever she didn't say follow it she said have you ever considered that calendar so in my confusion which we know that Abba is not the author of confusion but of peace and of sound mind and I prayed about it I went and looked it up and I just put it on the back burner in my mind because I was like I don't know I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and so that being said um, I think that she celebrated Purim on February 20th, the last supermoon that we had. And I didn't feel like there was, because it was a leap year, there was two Purims. And this week is actually the one that they celebrate. The other one was like a stand-in Purim. I don't know, look it up because it really was confusing. So anyway, long story short, I was like, well, I'm not really feeling to do that. So I didn't. So I was going to wait and celebrate Purim, which we're not, that's not one we have to celebrate. It's just, I love, I've always been drawn to the book of Esther my entire life. Um, and so that's why I wanted to acknowledge it and celebrate it. But I was going to be doing that this week and not then because it was just weird. So in case you didn't know this week, we actually have the last of the super moons that were in a row, January, February, and March. And I think it's the 19th or the 20th possibly this week. I have to look it up, but it is this week. And it's the same day that Purim falls on, on the Jewish calendar. All that being said, I'll bring it full circle back to my birthday because Abba was saying every year of growth that we have in our journey in this world and with the Most High, right? Our birthday is also the head of the year because you age, obviously. But within that cycle of the year, you're also supposed to, Abba has a plan and a purpose for you to grow um, and to glean more wisdom 
and to you may have experienced shifts and things in your life, in your circumstances that are of this world um, that we go through and that he will either he'll either be refining us and purifying us or teaching us a lesson from something you know we did wrong or whatever it is, but it's our journey. It's our it's our life journey. And so when we get to our birthday again, it is the head of the year for me. And so I want to read a few scriptures that line up with that. So you can, on your birthday, write these down and pray and, and thank the Most High that you have come full circle in another year of your earth journey in this world with the Most High. Um, because we should absolutely honor that cycle that we we're not promised tomorrow. So we live our life in accordance to the commandments of the most high and honoring him in all we do and all, you know, our whole life, we surrender it over to him. So when he brings us full circle, we're coming into a new year. And so the first one I want to go to is Exodus 12, verse, verse 2. So this month shall mark for you the beginning of months, and it shall be for you. Now, I know that in reference, this means when he first initiated the calendar for the for his people, um, when they first came out of Egypt. Okay, I'm going to come back to this verse in a minute, but I just want you to mark that on your birthday as this month shall mark for you the beginning of months, because that is when you entered into this world. So then I want to go to Deuteronomy 7, verse 13. Sometimes I think Deuteronomy is after Exodus, like right after I always doing so. I don't know why you would think. <laughs> So it's Deuteronomy 7, verse 13. If you want to follow along. All right. Let's see. He, well, I'm going to start in 12 because 13 starts in a mid-sentence, and I don't like to do that. If you heed these ordinances by diligently observing them, the Lord, your God, or... I'm going to say this, Yahuwah Elohim will maintain with you the covenant loyalty that he swore to your ancestors. He will love you, bless you, multiply you. He will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle. And the issue of your flock in the land that he swore to your ancestors to give you. Wow. Read that on your birthday every year. Read that. That is a promise to follow. If you follow and obey his commands for the entire cycle of your year. Will he not bless you? That is, I love that. That is so beautiful. It's like when I read those things, it's like honey on my lips. Like I get so, ah, uh, so grateful, so humbled, so thankful that he never gave up on me when I was in sin, that he chased me down and brought me back into all truth. You know, it's like honey, so good. All right, so let's go to Lamentations 3.22. I feel like Lamentations is one of those books that not a lot of people use. I'm not sure why, but it never gets talked about a lot. Let's see if I can find it. Get a little more organized in my videos because they end up being scatterbrained sometimes. And I know that the Most High is an orderly God. He's orderly, and he wants things that we do for him orderly. Da -dun, da -dun. 
Sorry. Oh, by the way, I am using my. Let's see if I can do this without dropping everything. My King James version with the apocrypha in it. Um, this this is the only other one I go to besides my New Jerusalem Bible. I have a Tanakh. I have a lot of Bibles, but I like this one because a it has the apocrypha and it's word simple. Um, I've, it's just I like it. I've liked it, and it's hardback. I like that too. Um, my gosh, please forgive me. I am not doing this correctly. All right, Lamentations. All right, wow, that was amazing. I turned to it without even looking. 322. The steadfast love of Yahuwah never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Are you singing that song? <laughs> it's a verse in the song. The steadfast love of Yahuwah never ceases, and his mercies never come to an end. They're new every morning. For great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. And we'll go to Ezekiel 11, verse 19. Ezekiel eleven nineteen. And I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. I just realized that didn't make sense. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh so that they may follow my statutes and keep my ordinances and obey them. Then they shall be my people and I will be their God. Hallelujah. Is that it? Yep. Hallelujah. That was 19, right? Yes. So give us a new heart and a new spirit. That's awesome. So if you wrote those down, like I'm going to, I'm going to be doing this from now on, on my birthday, because these are promises. They are promises from the most high um, for our personal head of the year, right? So we should rejoice. Like I said, it is our head of the year. It's our new year we're walking into. So we need to stand and believe and receive um, that it is a new day. It is a new morning. And, you know, we have dreams, we have goals, we have things that we want and that the most high has put on our heart to accomplish. And um, it's, we mark this day and we're, we mark this day with new faith that, you know, the dreams and goals we have, they, they should line up with the, what the most high wants for our life. We need to be in right alignment with those things, right? And stay submitted unto the leading of the Ruach HaKodesh in all things. Because if we get out of alignment and we're trying to fulfill our dreams, it tends to be out of the flesh and on our own. And that's when we run into problems and we hit walls and things are not going in the right direction. And a year from now, when we have our birthday and we look back and we're like, oh, well, I tried this and blah, 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 you know, because it wasn't in the right alignment and submission unto the most high. So move forward by submitting all of it over to him as we enter into that new year. So that's all I wanted to say in reference to that. Um, I just, I don't know, that's so beautiful. And it's such a gorgeous day. Now, Parable of the Vineyard Friday, I don't know if anybody has watched it or not. If you've seen it, I mean, their videos can get a little long and I sometimes listen to them throughout the week just so I can catch up the whole thing. But I had not heard of the Zadok, Z-A-D-O-K. I think I'm saying that right. Calendar. 
nor have I heard of that word. And I typed it in wrong in Google. And it was so hard what I put in. And I'm like, oh my God, that's Talmudic. And that's terrible. It's evil. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I actually commented live. I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh my bad. Didn't mean to type the wrong word. So anyway, that was just my old joke. Um, but I have been in deep study since I asked for wisdom and understanding and revelation from the Ruach HaKodesh as I began to study who these people were. And, um, you know, this was in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Copper Scrolls that were found. Um, and it all was in the area. And this is what caught my attention. It was in the area that John the Baptist preached. Okay, the wilderness area where John the Baptist preached, these were found, or the, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, and where this calendar um, comes from, or the, the scrolls that reference the calendar. It wasn't like a printed out calendar, but anyway. And so the reason that caught my attention is, A, since I was 19 years old, I've been praying, and I don't know where this came from, except for the Holy Spirit. I assume, but when I was 19, I was on fire with the Holy Spirit. I was like fire. It was so intense. And I was praying, Abba, I want to be the John the Baptist girl for the second coming of the most high of, of Yahusha. Sorry. Um, and I prayed that a lot for like years. I prayed and prayed and prayed. Um, yeah. So if you haven't heard the Elijah list, there was a prophetic word released on the Elijah list. I think it was last week that um, the spirit of John the Baptist is being released, that Abba is releasing a spirit of John, like a John the Baptist spirit of boldness and repentance, because we know that this world needs it right now, right? And when I heard that, it struck me like deep, deep, deep. I was like, ooh, gripped, you know? And so that was what attracted me to doing the study on these things about the calendar that they were sharing. And we all have to be led at our own time. We have to be led by the Ruach HaKodesh in our own way. And we learn from others but we don't necessarily agree with others, do we? We don't necessarily like, if one person does this and not this, it's not our job to cause division within the body, but just to learn and test it for ourselves and pray about it. And if it's what he tells us, then we do that. If he doesn't, if it's not confirmed within our spirit, then we don't do it. But we're not to judge one another on it, not at all. So I'm sharing because this is what he has shown me. I, you know, I just want to share with you. I don't want anybody to feel pressured or like one way or the other. You are doing what you do because Abba told you to do what you do, right? I'm doing what I do because he told me to do what I do. And then we share that. But if it's not on the same page, sometimes it takes others. We each get revelations at different times. So don't change your way because a person says it. Give it to him and let the Ruach reveal it to you. That's enough of that. I just wanted to make that point because I've learned the hard way in that. I really, really have learned the hard way. And so I hope this doesn't clip off that go off the screen for a second and I've not tried that yet am I still there I hope where did it go shoot it didn't work okay well anyway so um I thought I wrote all this down but I felt really convicted to follow this calendar and the head of the year on that calendar begins on March 20th, which I think is Wednesday. Okay. And they lined it up like that because they go on the 354 day year, I believe. 
I could be wrong because I'm still learning. But anyway, it spoke to me because of the lining up of Passover, Pesach. And I want to be correct on Passover. Well, I don't know if it's wrong because I was going to do Passover on April 19th and 20th, you know, that week. That's what I felt convicted to do up until this past Friday. And so I may just do it twice. (laughs) But Passover is on, I think it's on April 2nd, if you follow that calendar. Um, I'm going to have to put a link in this video. And I didn't put the links in the other video, but I promise I will. I just like Shabbat yesterday, I literally probably for the first time ever sat all of Shabbat and I did not break it in any way, shape or form. I didn't even get out. I mean, I got out of the bed, of course, but then I went and I even took a nap. I don't take naps. I, I never take naps. And I just literally did nothing yesterday because I wanted to thoroughly honor Baba on Shabbat. So that's why the links didn't get posted because I like did nothing. Um, but I'll post the link to the Zadok calendar. And um, what else I wanted to say about this? My goodness, my mind went blank. So I looked it up and Zadok means, and catch this now because this is pretty awesome. It means justified and righteous. And I was immediately taken back. And I was like, "Mm, who else has said about that? Well, Melchizedek, right? And so Abba had taken me through the study of Melchizedek. I think it was in January, like around the, the first week of January, like deeply into who Melchizedek was, what about him? Because there's so many different interpretations. If you look up Melchizedek, some people say that he was, um, Shem, I've heard that he wasn't Shem, that he was just like a, um, a being of righteousness. I've even heard that. But all that said, um, we are part of the Melchizedek priesthood because of Yahusha, because Yahusha is the highest Melchizedek priest there is. We do not follow the Levitical priesthood because they had that before Yahushua, you know, atoned for our sins. Um, And that was the Levitical priesthood was done away with at that point. So we come and we be because of the priest because of Yahushua and he is the king Melchizedek priest. Right. So you can look all this up. I've studied that. And that being said, when I was reading about the Zadok, I was like, whoa. So they were Melchizedek priests or maybe not, but similar to because Zadok was a priesthood. That was the title of our priesthood. And so. um This all lined up with Abba calling me his scribe. I'm not sure where he's taken me with this, but he's really been drawing me into who were the scribes, who were his chosen scribes. And he's taken me all the way back to Moses right now. And Moses was similar to a Zadok priest because he was a scribe also. He was instructed in that. Um, And so I've been learning about that. And so you can reference Moses as a scribe in Numbers 21.18 and Deuteronomy 33.21. And so... I'm trying to tie this together. And this is why this calendar spoke to me because of the Zadok priesthood. And in the area of Qumran, 
which is, I believe Damascus is what they said. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but I think it's the same area, um, which is where John the Baptist preached, which is where the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls were found, which is the same area that the Zadok priest lived, okay? Um, so all that tied together and was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I was on overload with information. So John the Baptist was in the Qumran community, right? And he wasn't a scribe. Although it'd be interesting if he did write some stuff. Can you imagine if we found some stuff John the Baptist wrote? I'm going to have to look that up. I just thought about that. But he was part of the Melchizedek priesthood too. Um, and so Zadok comes from actually a name. Like... Everybody thought Melchizedek was a person, but it wasn't. It was a priesthood. But Zadok is actually the name of the son of Eleazar, who was the son of Aaron, who was the first Levitical priest. So do you see the lining up? Isn't that crazy? Um, and so I began to look up. This all goes back to also to the Copper Scrolls. And I haven't studied those yet, but I'm getting that's what I'm doing now. Um but it lines up for us. Now think about this, that we are called, oh wait, no. Yeah, we are called Melchizedek priest, or we, yeah, like I said. Um, I have so many different notes, I'm sorry. I wasn't necessarily going in this direction with it, but it sort of just came out. So in 1 Kings 134, write that down because you can go look it up later. But um, it speaks about Solomon. He was a Zadok priest. Did you know that? It was a scribe too. Crazy. Oh, oh, so, okay. So the whole thing about linen, right? Oh my goodness. So linen, Abba's been like, wear linen, wear linen, throw your clothes away, wear linen, like pressure, right? And I really felt super, super, super pressure. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm thinking about, let me know if you want to do this, but Rowena, and I haven't talked to her about it either yet, but um, we were talking the other day and she said that Abba told her to throw her clothes away and to sew most of her clothes. I didn't ask her if I could share that yet, but I just did. Um, and I told her that Abba told me to throw my clothes away and wear linen. That's what he told me. And I thought he was like crazy because I was like, yeah, I thought Abba was crazy. No, that's just silly. Anyway, you know how you, you doubt what you hear sometimes? You're like, do I hear that? Did I really hear that? Or was that the enemy? You know, you know how you do that and you question it? And plus, we like our clothes because we're girls, right? Well, when Ruina told me that, I got really convicted in my That's when I knew. Um, that's when I knew that he was telling me to do it. So today I'm finishing up getting rid of my clothes because literally he told me only three dresses. It was like, you had three dresses, that's it. And I'm like, um, are you sure? Because my storage is full of stuff. And he told me this before we ever moved out of our last house. He was like, suitcase. And I've said this before. And I was like, are you sure? Suitcase. Well, long story short, when I talked to her, she confirmed it. But where this is going is I'm saying, I would like to do a Google Hangout where we could all do like a study once a week at a time together. I think that would be really awesome. I feel like he's put it on my heart um, for us to do that. So, go find out. But anyway, back to this, because I'm almost done. Linen was what we know all of the priests were instructed to wear, fine linen. Oh, awesome. I'm going to find out 
and then we should be able to set something up. I think it'd be really great. Um, but when he was telling me to wear linen, I understood. Not only does linen, you know, it represents purity and righteousness and all that, but did you know linen protects you from 5G? Oh, I'm gonna do a study. I'm gonna do a video on that too. But um, it gives energy to the body. It's resistant to radiation. It reduces solar gamma radiation by almost half, protecting humans who are wearing linen. So anyway, I'm back off that subject because I could go all the way through that. But he's been telling me to wear linen. He's been instructing me as a scribe. So part of me was thinking he's told me to do a study of Noah and the Exodus. And he said, I want you to study both of those. And then they're going to cross reference to, to what's going to occur in the last days. So I'm studying that right now. But um, anyway, I was really convicted and drawn to the Zadok calendar from all of this stuff tying together. It was like connect the dots. And I didn't go very deep into it because I just wanted to, you know, speak of that it was the priesthood, that Zadok was actually a son of Aaron from the Levitical priesthood, that Solomon was a Zadok priest, that, you know, John the Baptist was in that area. He wasn't considered a priest, but we know that he was the way he, you know, preached repentance and prepared the way for Yahusha. Um, Elijah, he was a Zadok priest. And he was in the area of Qumran, which was Damascus. So with all that, it was enough information for me to be convinced to follow this calendar. It really was. And after hearing the, the parable of the vineyard and the way they laid it out, it just made sense to me. So my head of the year, the one I will be um, referencing, is going to be this week. And that's the way I'm going to lay out the whole year. And I thought it was pretty. Oh, that's cool. So he was a priest. I didn't know that. That's so awesome. And I'm going to have to study that more. Because I really, I haven't studied John the Baptist in like 15 years. And especially now, it's totally different. Um, it was enough to convince me. So I'm going to be doing my head of the year is going to be on Wednesday ushering in the new year. And it was so convenient because it was the week of my birthday. And like I said, Abba told me that we are supposed to celebrate our birthdays as a head of the year for each of us individually. And I think there's probably a lot deeper revelation in that that I will share when I receive it. But it is exciting. And I, I'm super pumped about being 43. So I think that's awesome. Um, uh, yes, because now I'm the same age as Rowena, and for the same age, and we like being 43. I earned it, I earned all 43 of my years. Um, so now it's kind of all over the place. I apologize. I really do. I'm trying to, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm praying that Abba leads me um, in the way he wants to lay out my videos going forward. Because like I said, he wants me to, A, I think I'm going to begin reading second Ezra out loud um, this week because he wants me to read the word. I think it's because we can have video references to go back to. Um, we're going to need those in the last days, just like this community on YouTube is growing because all of us, we're all given different pieces of this puzzle and we're coming together with our individual pieces, you know, and we're all getting like light bulb revelations because Abba is really showing us some of those like awesome stuff that hasn't been talked about, like in our churches ever. And, you know, I was like everybody else, part of a church for many years. I was on, you know, the prayer team and this and that as part of your church. Um, but it's not the same. And so I actually started a house church back in 1998. 
that was a long time ago, but it was powerful. Our little house church, I mean, we would come in and we'd have worship in the living room with a CD player and the Holy Spirit would drop in the living room and we'd all start to like, you know, pray in tongues and worship and, and it was just so powerful and he's really put it on my heart. You know, that's kind of, I believe where he's leading us because these house churches are not just going to be like house churches. They're going to be sanctuaries, like safe havens, you know, and um, for communities, because what we need from each other right now is prayer. We need to be praying for one another fervently and putting our armor on every single day. We have to. And I'm staying with my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, and uh, my husband's dad is passing away. He's been sick for a very long time. And um, he has COPD stage four. He, um, I don't know, he's very grumpy and he refuses salvation. He is put his foot down and he refuses the word of the most high because he had a son who passed away at like four days. And ever since he, um, thank you ever since he's, I don't know, there was some time years ago where I actually was able to witness to him, but he's getting angrier and angrier the closer he gets to passing yet. He's so scared. He has bouts like, he couldn't breathe, you know, and he got really scared like two weeks ago and he's having visions of like evil stuff. And so I'm going to anoint with the anointing oil, his room and, and pray, but I'm asking for boldness because he's a tough man and a intimidating. So I'm asking for boldness to go in and just be like the truth. Like this is the truth, you know, to wake him up. But that is why we need to be like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because I, well, I know Abbas told me that he will get saved, but I've got to get in there and really talk to him. And he can be intimidating sometimes. But that's why he's got us here in this house. We could have never stayed, never would have worked out in the past. And suddenly here we are. So, our connection to brothers and sisters in this time is so important. So, so, so important. So I've got your back. You've got my back and we love each other because we are a family and we need to be living as a family and supporting one another and sharing with one another, the good news and, and the word and, you know, sharing each other's burdens you know, so I'm really drawn to, drawn to that. And I feel like you are too. And everybody that Abba connects we with is in the same mind. And so um, I really want to talk to a few other women about the Google Hangout. I think that'd be really awesome. And yeah, so we just have to get on a time schedule. But good stuff happening. And spring is here. Hallelujah. Thank you. So happy for spring. All right. I'm going to tie this up. I pray you have a blessed day. Mwah. Shalom. I love you. Thank you. Yes. Three string cord. Thank you, Beth. You're so awesome. I really love and appreciate you so much. You have no idea. Pray for you and your family, and your loved ones all the time. And I'm praying for an RV too, because I missed that life. It was so awesome. So many people, but um, yes, you have a beautiful day and uh, feel free, call me, chat with me anytime to be doing that more like I need to um, with a few other people too. So blessings, blessings, blessings. Have a beautiful day. Shalom.